here we are the most high before you we are about to hear your word we ask you to speak to us in the glorious name of jesus your word is life father we pray the logos to be changed to rema this morning as you begin to minister the spirit of god to move father i thank you for what you're gonna do the spirit of god i appreciate you for your presence in this place in the name of jesus as we pray and we say amen god bless you we thank god and we praise god for for his grace and goodness hallelujah somebody we thank god and we we bless god for his grace and his love in our life this morning uh, i'm so excited i'm so blessed to be here again this morning to to preach the word of god i am so blessed so blessed and so blessed let's read the word of god we are starting in the book of proverbs chapter 30 verse 19. i'm starting to the amplify by the book says proverbs chapter 30 verse 19 or we can start on verse 18 to 19. the book says there are three things which are too wonderful for me yes for which i do not understand amplify bible verse 19. the way of a nigger in the air the way of the serpent upon a rock the way of a ship in the midst of the sea and the way of a man with a maid hallelujah i thank god for his word uh by the grace of god we are now teaching we're still going forward concerning the way of ego in the air the way of an ego in the air that is our teaching i think we are an eight part we are an eight part we are in a part eight part eight part eight very important to understand that if you miss uh you know one two three four five six seven i will uh, uh advise you actually to consider to to get those copies it will help you will bless you to learn the way of the ego in the air and where we come to, to read the man of god said the way of the ego in the air the way of a serpent upon a rock the way of a ship in the midst of the sea the way of a man with a man as we explained already we said the man of God wanted to understand the way of the ego in the air. This was his priority. He wanted to know the way of the ego in the air. But this morning, we'll be just begin to touch something simple. Last Sunday, we was teaching and explaining about the feet of an ego. The feet of an ego. That was explaining last Sunday. And this Sunday, by the grace of God, I'll begin to touch, to touch something simple about the beak. The beak or the long, sharp beak of an ego. The long sharp beak of an ego. That's all I begin to talk about. The long sharp beak, beak of an ego. Because we was touching about the feet, and we'll begin to, to minister this morning about the long sharp beak of an ego. Or the beak of an ego. That means the mouth of an ego. Because we have the mouth. The ego has his beak. And we begin to discuss about the beak of the ego. As we are still in our teaching, in our series about the way of ego in the air. And we are touching something about the beak of the ego. Hallelujah. It's very important to understand this. Because when I'm talking about the beak of the ego, I would like us to read more. Let's go in the book of uh, Isaiah. Let's go in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to read verse 30 and 31. The Bible says this. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and select the young men shall feebly stumble and fall, exalted. 
like to read the King James. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. I'll read 31 and amplify Bible. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall literally wings and mount up close to God as an eagle. Mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk, not faint, or become tired. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah, somebody. Those who they shall wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I think I explained this long time ago. Well, in our series of the teaching about the way of ego. How the ego renew his strength. When they're saying, those who they shall wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They're talking about the process and ego always go through from the age of 40 because the ego it can live long life on the earth but on the age of 40 he have to go through the painful process to renew his strength to renew his ability to renew his power and when God was speaking to the prophet Isaiah and he was showing him or teaching him whatever the ego go through those who the wait upon me they will go through the same process and the same things happen the ego when he's going through this process the same things will happen to them too the bible said those who they shall wait upon the law they shall renew their strength like the ego do because you need to understand as i was explaining about the feet of the ego the ego he lives by two things by his beak and by his feet the ego lives in two things by his beak and by his feet and we talk about the feet already and today we begin to talk about the beak of the ego when i'm talking about the beak i'm talking about the mouth of the ego whenever the ego catch something on his feet the next step he will use his beak to cut, to tear, to destroy the prey. Without that beak, the ego can't eat. Without that beak, the ego can't live. Hallelujah. Whenever he catch, the ego can see. Let's read the book of Job. Hallelujah. Job chapter 39. Job chapter 39. We're in the book of Job chapter 39. And we are starting from verse 27. The Bible says this. Does the ego mount up at your command and make his nest on the heart? Verse 28. On the cliff, he dwelt and the remained securely upon the point of the rope and the stronghold. 29. From there, he spies out the prey, and his eyes sees it far off. Verse 30. His young, his young one suck up blood. And where the slain are, there it is. Attend God. Attend God. God is asking, as he was talking to Job, through the willing winds, asking Job, the ego, he can mount up by your command or not. And Job was not able to answer God. And when I'm saying I'm talking about the beak of the ego, God said the ego he lives on the mountain top. Is where the ego dwell. The house of the ego is on the mountain top. The nest of the ego is on the mountain top. Is where the ego lives. Is where everything of the ego it is. I said last Sunday saying that the heaven is the jurisdiction of the ego. 
is the territory of the ego is a jurisdiction of the ego or is a territory of the ego that's why in proverbs chapter 30 verse 19 the man of god says the way of the ego in the air the air actually is where the ego passes all of his time the ego that the, the air is everything for the ego hallelujah the air is everything for the ego but whenever you want to to hunt the prey from above the bible says in the book of job you shall look down and seize the prey to be a goat to be the snake to be to be whatever it can be which the ego desire to eat he shall leave his territory he shall leave his jurisdiction to come to look the food down and when it's coming down he shall grab the prey through his feet he will use his flexible talon to catch the prey and whenever the ego catch the prey the next step he will begin to use his beak to cut or to eat the prey this is the key point When the ego catch the prey, he will transport the prey to his nest. He will take the prey to the sky. He will take the prey on the mountain top. This is already teaching. Actually, it's powerful. He will take the prey on the earth to the mountain top. He will take the prey to be a goat, to be the snake, whatever, to be a fish whatever it can be the ego will catch it will grab it and take it to the mountain top take it on the sky and on the mountain top it will begin to keep to destroy to eat the fish to eat the prey to eat the meat hallelujah but when i'm saying talking about the beak of the ego the ego lives by his beak. Without that beak, the ego is weak. Watch me, please. I'm going somewhere. Without that beak of the ego, the ego is weak. Without that beak, the ego is weak. He can't live without his beak. Without that beak, the ego cannot live. The beak of the ego is life or death for the ego. I know I'm speaking in tongues. Most of many people are not catching me. I'm coming. Just wait me. On the corner, you are waiting. The beak of the ego is everything for the ego. Whenever the ego wants to eat something, whenever the ego desires something, you will begin to use the beak. To another word life or death is on the beak of the ego if the ego can use his beak he shall die because the only way he can get food by using his beak he can stand or he can be full with food by using his beak to catch the prey yes the ego is supreme for catching for hunting but for eating, he must use the beak. Because when you catch the goat, you can cut it on the hand. He has to use his beak. The beak of the ego is everything for the ego. That's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, those who they shall wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength like the young ego. Because whenever the ego it grow up on the age of four, the ego will begin to become weak. The ego will begin to become weak. That's why in the book of Isaiah, they're giving idea the process which the ego used to go through from the age 40 
Many ego die in this period. Many ego die in this period of time. Because from 40 is flexible talon is not really again so strong to continue grabbing or catching the prey. Is long, sharp, big, it begins to bend. Long, sharp, big of the ego, the mouth of the ego, you begin to bend. And when the mouth of the ego begin to bend, the ego will have the difficulty for eating, for, for cutting or for tearing the, the prey. And one thing the ego has to do is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. That's where the life of ego will begin again. What I mean is the ego shall fly to the mountaintop. The ego shall fly to the mountaintop and it will be on his nest. He will spend months and months. He has to renew his strength. Isaiah 40, verse 31. When God is giving these pictures to his children, to his people, to know, to have the idea what the ego used to go through from 40. Now, this is the key point. When the beat, I'm saying he can't live without his beat. The beak of the ego is everything for the ego. Whenever he catch the prey, he have to to tear the prey or to eat the prey by using his beak. Now, if using his beak to eat, to cut, to do everything, if the beak begin to bend, now the ego will have difficulty to eat, to cut, to tear the bed or to throw something. That's where the ego shall fly to the mountain top. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. He shall fly to the mountain top to renew his strength. They are talking about the rebirth of the ego. Isaiah chapter 40, 31. It's all about the rebirth of the ego. It's all about renewing of the strength. What the ego will do is when he fly on the mountain top, it will begin. I'm giving you the picture so I can explain it so you can get what is all about concerning the beak of the ego. When the ego flies to the mountain top, it does something amazing on the mountain top. It will begin to beat its beak on the rock. La copra de Nicas de It will spend time beating its beak on the rock. You know, you have long beak. And will begin to beat his beak on the rock until we plug it out. The ego shall plug out his beak because the long beak shall bend an age of 40. Now the ego cannot continue to eat or to enjoy the prey. The only thing he has to do, he has to change the beak. And how we going to change the beak by flying to the mountain top? When the ego reach to the mountain top, he will begin to beat his beak, his mouth, on the rock. But in the, in the book of uh, Job, in the book of Job, chapter thirty-nine, where we came to read, the Bible is saying very clear: the ego is dwell in the rock. Verse twenty-eight, on the cliff. It dwell, it remains securely up, upon the point of the rock. King James said this. Job chapter 39, verse 28. She dwell and abide on the rock. The ego, it dwell in abide. It dwell and abide on the rock. Is where he built his nest. On the mountain top, and whenever he's weak, he have to fly to the mountain top, begin to beat his beak to plug it out. And when he will plug out his beak, after time, the new beak will come out. The new beak will come out because he can spend long time on the mountain. 
five months or whatever it is you will spend a long time on the mountain when he plug out his beak another beak will come out after time and the ego shall weigh until his beak shall grow and become strong and the next thing he will change about also his flexible talon and he will change again his his feather when he change the beak he change the the, the the talon and he change the feathers now the ego he can now fly again he can soar again why because he renew his strength but i don't focus on the feet i don't focus on the feathers i'm focusing on one thing the beak what that mean he go flying to the mountain top according to the isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 those they shall wait upon the law they shall renew their strength just the ego do is the way that ego do how the ego do it by waiting on the mountain beating is big to plug it out because the bible said this let not begin to preach because i was just giving you the idea what the ego got done Hallelujah, somebody. Let's begin now. Uh, hallelujah. Let's begin to read in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21. And now, uh, no, Proverbs 18, 21, Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Proverbs 18, verse 21, Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. What is the Bible says? Hallelujah. God is good. The way of the ego in the air. We are going forward. Chapter 18. Verse 21. The Bible says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The tongue is the peak of the ego when you're talking about that tongue for the ego we're going to put it is the big because he live by his peak or he can die without using his peak the bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue doesn't matter who you are you can live or you can die just by your big what i mean by your tongue you can live or you can die just by your mouth. What they mean is here is what you are talking. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Oh my God. That's why you're going to see the ego. He cannot live without using his mouth. Life is in the mouth of the ego. For the ego to live. For the ego to live. He has to keep using his beak. But when the ego came in two feet on terror, the ego I'm talking about is God because the Bible says in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, he said, you see, I have carried you under the eggs, under the, the wings of an eagle. God said, I have carried you under the wings of an eagle. That means God is an ego. Now when God came, the Bible said the word become flesh. Jesus. When he came, look at the life of Jesus. All of 33 years Jesus lived. All of the time he spent. He never kept quiet. He was just talking. Talking. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
He always stopped. That guy never kept quiet. He kept the quiet while he was going on the cross to die. There was a reason why. But always the guy was talking. He was talking. The kingdom of God. The ki you live or you die by what you are talking. You live or you die by the confession of your mouth. You live. Somebody, you, I want you to understand this. You live or you can die but what you are talking or but what you are confessing. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Watch yourself. What you are confessing. Watch yourself. What you are talking. I say, I'm talking about the long, sharp beak of the ego. He cannot live. He has a powerful vision. More than human being. But he can't live without a big you have a great vision i know but you can't live no matter great vision you have without a big no jesus has the great vision he came to save the universe to die for us but the guy was talking he was talking he was talking he never kept quiet always talking the word of god he always talked the bible said i send the people to arrest the jesus when people they came they will fail in his they fell in love with his word they hear jesus talking they say wow this is amazing they went back to the people they sent them to arrest the jesus they say we never saw anybody talk like this man you see they came to arrest the guy but the guy never kept quiet he was just talking the kingdom of god and people who they came to arrest him they was not able to arrest him because his mouth was open you cannot catch the ego when his mouth is open you can't defeat the ego when his mouth is open. You cannot destroy the ego when his mouth is open. Whenever the mouth of... I begin already to preach. Oh my God. Whenever the mouth of the ego is open, if you try, you are destroyed. You keep quiet. Can I preach this morning? When the Bible was talking about David and Goliath, Goliath was like, a snake whenever he appeared he was talking Goliath was talking and Israel was not talking when Goliath came he began to speak nonsense insulting the name of God insulting God's people even Saul was the biggest above every one of them in Israel he's running away they kept quiet and the guy is talking you are so quiet your enemies keep talking this is where you are defeated. You are so paralyzed to what your enemy is saying. They keep talking nonsense in the morning, in the night. Witchcraft is about talking evil in the night. How, how they do witch? By talking. They do witch by talking. Witchcraft is about talking. They are talking evil. This guy cannot go far. This guy cannot do this. This guy, they are talking and doing some ceremony, some rituals. Their mouth is open, talking nonsense. Now, what is bad to your side? You are so quiet, somebody. You know, when death came, because death is the shadow of the ego. Death is the shadow. Jesus is the real death. Watch death when he came. He looked at soul. He said, nobody can beat this. He began to talk. He said, I will beat. He began to talk. He was just talking until they say, Are you crazy? He never kept quiet. Look at them in the book of First Samuel. He never kept quiet. He said, What you will pay this man? Who, the man will defeat this guy. Oh, they know nobody will defeat this guy. He will, he will marry the daughter of the king. He will become the son of the. Oh, <laughs> just talking nonsense. They want to discourage them. They are talking nonsense to them, but they can't talk before Goliath. This is the problem. We have cre Christians who they can talk you down, but they cannot talk sickness down. We have Christians who can take the name of his pastor, the name of his brother and sister. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's this. But whenever sickness catch him, he can't talk sickness down. But he can talk his pastor down. He can talk his mama down. He can talk his brother down. He can talk anybody down. But whenever he's sick, he can't talk sickness down. He can't talk sickness down, but he can talk his pastor down. He can talk his brother down. 
Dave is asking them the question, what they gonna do? How much they gonna pay the God? Who going to defeat this God? So oh, you cannot just try to discourage the God. That's why we have type of the brother and sister in Christianity. They are expert of discouraging you to go far to do something. Why? Because but whenever they are sick, you can see them on the bed. You used to talk. Why not you are talking against sickness? Because you need to use your beak to destroy, to defeat sickness. Sickness cannot be defeated if you close your mouth. Sickness cannot be defeated if you shut down your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Sickness cannot be destroyed if you keep quiet. You are too quiet. Sickness is taking advantage. Cancer is growing. A HIV diabetic is growing. You are too quiet, somebody. The Bible said, David keep talking. I want to know. He said, anybody can take me to Saul. Saul here, they said, somebody is talking can beat this guy. And they begin to talk nonsense. Saul said, bring that guy to me. When you look at the guy, his size, he will disqualify you already. He said, go back to your mom. He goes, it seemed like he knew Dave before. He said, go back because your size and everything. He said, no, Dave keep talking before, before so. No, I'll beat this guy. You know, I was in the bush. I used to kill the, the lion, the bear. He keep talking. They, they are trying to discourage the guy. That guy keep talking. He keep talking. Keep talking, they will give up. Keep talking, they will give up. If you give up, all the foolishness they are talking, it will, it will catch you. Keep talking, somebody. You are too quiet. Keep talking, keep talking. Let brother the Keep talking. They shall beat this guy. And watch this. Something's happened. When they took Dave before Goliath, Goliath began to cast Dave. You see, the Goliath was speaking. That devil knows life and death is in the form of the tongue. Goliath was speaking, but Israel they were not speaking. And when Dave got before Goliath, he never gave him the opportunity to keep talking. Dave was beginning to talk about you, I will kill you today. You, I will cut your head. You, the Lord will deliver you on my head. He began to talk. You know, Goliath is cursing them, and Dave also is talking God's word. He said, oh my God, you, the Lord will give me your head today. You see, Goliath is talking, Dave also keep talking. He keep talking. You are too quiet. That's why foolishness is still going. You wake up on the night. You begin to talk. They are talking on the other side to witch you, to destroy you. And when you wake up the night, you begin to talk. You will destroy them because you have the superpower. The Bible says, greater, greater, greater is in you. Yes. When you begin to talk, the greatest will go out. The greatest cannot go out if you can't talk it out. You must talk it out so that greatness can go out. When I'm saying greater is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. is God, is the Word of God in you. But it cannot go out if you can't talk it out. Yeah. You must talk it out so that... Oh my God, help me. Yeah. The book says... The book says very clearly, Death was talking. Death was talking. Let's read now. In the book of Matthew. Oh my God, somebody's getting something out of this. Le Prada Sigas Telebogi, Masse Prodo de Gastelebagia, Re Prosicas Telebogite, Masoto, Masoto, Lage Dagi, Ro Prosicas Telebogia, Masseke la Bagida, Risaka Talagia B, Meso Prada di Gastelebosia, I Brada di, I Brada di. Re protosika stele bogiti, maso tolo bosi abo. Regeste legadi, maso prada dige, maso prada dige. Lagosta basi gabaya, megasto lo bogiya. Le protosika stele gasi, mega 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 si dago. I prada diga stele bosiya, me sakata baya. Lagom prada dige stele bosiya, me se tele bogiya, masse ke tele bosi. Rega do bosi ga, mega stele gadi. La prosocite, gigaba sete la guida bo, ma se gaia, la gosta, la gosta, 
reprono nigas telebosite in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus glory the book says in the book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 37 for by your word you will be justified or acute or by your word you will be condemned and sentenced that is amplified let me read it King James by your word those shall be justified by your word those shall be condemned what that mean by your word you shall be justified by your word you shall be condemned devil was justified before go like by his word he said you I will cut your head today what he was talking and is what he was justified is the reason he was justified is the reason he was saved before the enemy like go like by your word you will be condemned people they used to say nobody will beat go like there was already condemned there was already condemned he said nobody can defeat this guy nobody the book says Moses he sent the spy to go to spy out the country of the promise Canaan land when people they got in the land they spy out the land on their way going out ten of them they came to Moses but they say oh they speak to the people we cannot we are like great supper great supper to, to, to the eyes of these people these people they are giant they are powerful they are great we cannot defeat them we are like great supper on their eyes we cannot defeat these people they not they say we are like insect to the eyes of these people and two of them Joseph and Caleb they came to say no 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 the country is good we're going to defeat these people they they were justified by the word of their mouth and this then they was condemned by the word of their mouth God said to Moses they will not make it to heaven I mean they will not make it to Canaan land I mean they will not get in the Canaan they shall die in the wilderness because the word they are saying they are like grand zopa they cannot defeat these people you shall be justified by your word you shall be condemned by your word my sickness what my sickness my headache no i never headache i will never have headache i can feel headache but i can't have headache i can feel headache but i can't have headache i can feel stomach but i cannot have problem or trouble in stomach no feeling is different is feel and go because there is no place to do to stay you can feel it and have to go. But when you say your sickness, no, I never be sick. I felt sick. I mean, I can feel like sickness. You feel like it's feeling. It has to go. I can't have sickness. But I can feel. The problem is you you have sickness. That's why you are condemning sickness. Somebody say, my sickness, my in our family. People suffer this. Okay, in your family. Now, which family you belong now? Are you in Christ? Family? Or you stay to your family? The Bible says we are born again, born in the word. We was born in flesh to our father's mother. No, we are born, born in God. The Bible says in the book of First John 4 17, as God he is, so are we. Now, if God will never be sick, who to be sick? whatsoever is happened to, to God is the same stuff going to happen to me if it can be defeated to sickness forget it I said forget it I cannot be defeated by sickness why God never be defeated in sickness as he is so you are so are we no how you are like God defeated the Bible says you see you are sons of God all of you but you are dying like men it's shameful to die like a man God say you see all of you the son of the most high but you are you are god you are god you are dying like men no you're supposed not to die like a man no sick or oh, whatever it is you cannot die even the accident it cannot come your no way because the other stuff to talk it, it become like hard because you say other pastors i don't care any pastor 
I care about what Jesus said. I care what Jesus said. I care what Jesus said. I don't care about what somebody said. I care what Jesus said. By his stripes, we were healed. No, which things are you talking about? Which things are you confessing? You know, this type of the stuff I'm telling you. I was watching radio, Christian radio. I was shocked. I was watching Christian radio. And they, they bring up, um, you know, promotion on stuff like, on the stuff, they're giving some promotion on stuff of healthy insurance. And they're saying, liberty of choosing your own assurance, liberty of choosing your own doctor, liberty of choosing your own hospital in Christian channel. They're saying liberty. I say, no, 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 no. They are liars. Choosing a doctor, choosing an hospital, cho is not liberty because if you are free, you cannot choose a doctor for what? Yes. Jesus said he's a sick person who seek doctor. Those they are good in, in Luke chapter 5. Those who they, they are healthy, they are in good condition. For what to go to look doctors? Jesus said he's sweet people. And I hear in Christian channel on the radio, I was driving. As I was driving on Christian radio, I was getting liberty of choosing your own doctor, liberty of choosing your own assurance, liberty of choosing your own hospital. I said, This they are liars because if I'm free, I can't choose no foolishness. For what? I don't like going to the hospital. I don't like going to see a doctor. I don't, I don't like it. I don't have time to spend going seeing dog for what? Wasting my time. And you go there and you sit on the chair waiting on the doctor. But healing is in you. You are going to the hospital carrying the virtue in you. The healing is in you. Liberty of choosing your own assurance. I say, first of all, I cannot choose any assurance. The only assurance I have is Christ. Christ is my assurance. To choose for what? Because you are cutting me money on my paycheck. Taking like half of my money is going to half assurance. I say, I'm paying these people. I wish I can take all my money of the assurance to give it to God. Giving these people money, health assurance, every paycheck, they are cutting me money. Whenever I get paid, they have to get to 100 US dollar, 200 US dollar in every check you are getting when they pay you. But these people have become billionaires by the sickness they're trying to put in your head. Liberty of choosing you. I say I'm free. A free person, Jesus said, he cannot go to look at doctors. Only sick do. And I will heal already. Why to go to look for a doctor? You see, they bring this in a Christian channel, in radio. And Christian, they are here with this type of foolishness. And you no, know, it becomes like normal. I hear another man of God say, it's so embarrassment because it seems like just you need to have assurance. For what? Anybody to have it. For what? You see, it's type of foolishness they want to put in your head. You shall live by the, by the word of your mouth, or you shall be condemned. What are you talking for? No, I'll never be sick. I cannot be sick. The fact of God is in me. I carry God in me. God can feel sick. If I feel sick, he has to go. He can't stay. He can't stay. He can't stay. There are different feeling and living. You can feel something for a moment. You just feel it. It's just like when you evil presence, there's somewhere you can feel it. There's some evil presence in this place. And in a second, they have to go. It's over. Black sickness, you can feel. But not to stay. He has to go. He has to go. Because you can't be sick. And the Bible says, Death was talking before Goliath. He was talking. He was talking. He was talking. The problem, you are not talking. Oh my God. My time is almost is over. Then he has preached. <laughs> Hallelujah. The beak of the ego. That beak of the ego. Hallelujah, somebody. That beak of the ego. Very important. Watch your confession. You shall live. You shall be condemned to the word of your mouth. What are you talking about? Hallelujah, somebody.
What are you talking about? Because your confession is very important. Your confession is very... The devil can defeat you. The devil can defeat you when you are not strong in confession. Jesus he never kept quiet. He never kept quiet. Even when the Pharisees and the Sadducees they come against him, Jesus was just talking. Just talking. They came to, to put the snake on his way. To ask him some evil question. So they look the way they can catch the guy. He was just talking. The guy was talking. He questioned them back. They ran away. He never kept quiet. You are so quiet when your aunt is speaking nonsense. You are so quiet when your, your, your uncle is speaking nonsense. You are so quiet when your enemy is speaking nonsense. They are not powerful. They are not. You are so powerful because greater is in you. The problem is you are not releasing the greatest is in you. The only way we can release the virtue, the only way we can release what is in us by talking, life and death is in the power of your tongue. I have Jesus in me. I have Zoe in me. I have the healing in me. But it can flow if I shut up my mouth. For me to bring the divinity to the humanity, I have to, I have to open my beak, my mouth, talking. I release virtue. I speak virtue. I am healed. I am delivered. I'm, you are talking life from inside out. You are bringing it out because it's in you. Life is in you. If you can bring it out, it can come out somebody. You must talk it out. So when you talk it out, it begins to flow. The Bible says, out of their valley shall flow river. River. They're talking about the Holy Ghost in the book of John. Out of their valley shall flow river. The river is in you. But for the river to flow, open up your mouth. Speak God's word. Speak God's word. Don't speak what the doctor says. I'm, oh my God. Don't speak what the doctor say. Don't speak what your mama say. Speak what God say. You are not doctor product. Doctor spoken nonsense because he don't know the product. Science don't know you yet. The person who knows you is God. He say you are healed. He say you are free. He say you are dead. Speak what God says, somebody. Oh, doctor, say say that foolishness is for himself. That foolishness is for doctor and his family, not for me. As I love the man of one of the man of God. He went to doctor. Doctor said, one of the doctors said, you have disease. I said, you are the one you have it. I said, are you are you? Do you know English? I, said, I know English better than you. By the way, I'm out of this place. And he leave. He never be sick, what the doctor said. He said, you have this kind of affection. He said, what? You do have it. By the way, you are the one you are touching my hand. That means you have it. And you are saying it's me. I'm out of the office. The guy went up. He was like a mad person. But he never be sick. That foolishness, the guy, the doctor was saying. He, was saying, he never had that disease. Until today, he's still alive. Powerful man of God. If you could embrace what the doctor could say, he could experience it. One day, I watched the pastor I love so much, Pastor Chris Wakilome, was preaching. He said, a man was coming to me to pray for him. And the Lord opened my eyes. When I see, God said, see, there is no any cancer in a body. But they said to him, he has cancer. He shall die because he believes, he knows he has cancer. But he said, the man of God, Pastor Chris Wakilome said, as the Lord opened my eyes, I look at him like, like on the x-ray. As I look at the guy, there was no cancer in the guy. But the guy is painful saying with cancer. But if the Lord opened my eyes, he said, see, he don't have cancer. But they say he has cancer. He shall die because he knows he has cancer. But he don't have cancer. No, you see. They put foolishness in his head. He has cancer. But God said to the man of God, he don't have cancer. But he's feeling that pain because he knows he has it. And the pain took over. What? The, the next step the guy has to go. Because he knows he has cancer. As God opened the, man, the eyes of the man of God, he began to look like an x-ray. He said, oh, oh, oh. There was no disease. There was no any sickness. I'm telling you somebody. Talk what God said. The doctor, they're after money. They're looking money.
let me go forward talk what God say God say I am healed God say I am free God say I am blessed but another stuff is the ego he used his beak to live without his beak the ego can live whenever he catch the prey he have to cut the prey by his mouth this is where my problem is I'm shifting to the next, the next level now I say I'm shifting now I begin to talk the power and the, the power of life and death is on the I mean life and death is in the power of the tongue now I'm shifting to the next level hallelujah the Bible says the way of ego in the air and the Bible says in the book of Isaiah those that shall wait upon the law they shall renew their strength is the rebirth of the ego they shall renew their strength just like a young ego explain already what happened to the ego to renew his strength hallelujah explain already what is happening for the ego when he's renewing his strength but the ego used his mouth to cut the meat he always used his mouth to cut the prey by using his mouth to cut the prey this is where my problem it is he can catch the goat but the goat will be just there killing the goat if i have to use his mouth and catch the snake is there but you have to use his mouth to kill it and you have to use his mouth to cut it to eat it and i was watching seeing the documentary of the ego you have to carry the goat on the mountain top where your egos children of ego they are on the nest the meat is there but the youngest they can't eat what I, as i was watching is the mama ego's mama that he will begin to cut the meat to the size of the god said god is wise i said god is wise as i was watching he has to cut now the meat to put to the beak of that the youngest ego is cutting the meat he has to put on the mouth of the youngest he cut the meat he has to put to the mouth of the youngest the another word the youngest they are eating waiting mama to cut for them they are not able to, to i mean to, to grab the bread and to cut because the beak is not strong the beak is not strong no this problem we have in the christianity is the problem of the beak is the problem of the beak is the problem of the big the bible said this in the book of job the time is run oh god have mercy the bible said this in the book of job job chapter 39 verse 29 to 30 let's go there the bible said this hallelujah the problem of the big the problem of the big let's go on the book of job chapter 39 chapter 39 verse 29 the bible said this watch this from there he spies out the prey and his eyes sees it from far okay verse 30 his young one suck up blood the young they do suck the blood but that grown-up ego he sees the prey from far above when he's on the sky and he will hunt he will go after the prey and kill it he will grab it by his flexible flexible talon and he catch the prey and he will begin to cut it to destroy it to eat it by his beak but the young one suck up blood they're not, they're not able to catch the prey they are not able to cut to tear apart the meat or the prey we have people men of god women of god the beak is not strong 
the big is not strong the bible say in verse in the in the last verse of job chapter i'm 39 first study the young ones suck up the blood and where the slain are there it is where the slain and i'll not shift to the matthew the way jesus said it i'm talking about the way job i mean god was talking to, to job where the slain in plural where the slain i mean the caracas the dead body caracas or dead body are there the ego it is. But in the book of Matthew, they're saying about where a caracas or a, a, a dead body is, it goes, they are gathering. It goes, they are gatherings where a dead body it is, where the prey it is, it goes, they are gathering to suck the blood and to eat them in the book of job they say where are bodies caracas are dead bodies now ego in singular is there it is very important but i don't want to go in detail of this but let me just go on this what the bible say where are the caracas are we have a lot of caracas but there is no big to men and women of God to cut, to cut the prey. Go to churches right now. You're going to see just the youngest of the ego. On the pulpit, youngest. On the chair, just youngest. Nobody is able to cut the prey for the children. They're just sucking the blood. They sing. You know, they read verse. Just sucking. About sucking, I'm a father. I was amazed when my beautiful, beautiful gift of God, a beautiful daughter of man, she was delivered. I, I was amazed. I didn't yet begin to talk to her. Oh, she's mama. She didn't yet begin to talk to her. Nobody taught my daughter how to suck. As I was watching, she was able to suck. Even he's saying, and when his mama catch her, nobody said to her something. She went straight on the breast. She began to suck. I said, whoa. Not any lesson, not any degree, not any master degree, but he began to suck. That means about sucking, we are born with it. Nobody can teach any child how to suck the breast. Nobody. Any child is born with that ability. Hallelujah. Every child is born with that ability. Any child can suck. If a child can suck, is not, is not, is not, is not. That means he's sick. But no matter what, that child has to be able to suck. Because he can't live without sucking. Because it's the way you will begin to eat. First day, two days, the, I mean, the child can eat. You're just living by sucking. And the Bible says here, his youngest suck up the blood. The youngest suck the blood. They don't eat meat. They're just sucking the blood. But you need to eat the prey for, to live, I mean, for life. The prey I'm talking this morning is the Bible. Is the word of God? Is the prey? Is the prey? Is the prey? I say I shift to another level. The prey I'm talking is the word of God, the Bible. But I'm looking people who they can grab Jeremiah and kill and bring out of Jeremiah life and give to people. I'm just watching. I see people they read Jeremiah. And they close in Jeremiah, finish in Jeremiah. Explain what they read. They are not explaining. They just keep repeating what they read. Say, yes, we read it. What that mean? What the realm? What the, the realm of God? That logos have to change it to realm to give life. You see somebody read and he begin, you know, trying to talk in his mind. <laughs> Talking his mind and say, oh my God. He's just trying to suck on the verse. He's still on. 
Go deeper. Go deeper. The meat is not on the skin. We have men of well, men and women of God. They're still on the skin. They're trying to suck the verse. The Bible says, Apostle Peter say, Apostle Paul say, mm -hmm. the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. What that mean? If you can go deeper, the Lord is my shepherd to bring out what is in. Ah, life will change. But the Lord is my shepherd. Let me repeat. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is with me. The, the grace and the faith of God. <laughs> oh my God. They are just the youngest. They are just sucking up. Just sucking up. <laughs> just sucking up. The youngest, they suck up blood. But the grown up ego is able to go to catch, to kill, and to tear the pot, to bring the meat out. Now the key point I'm trying to say is this. I'm so sick, tired of men and women of God. Being not able to bring out the meat. Just sucking up. Just sucking up the verse. No. Every verse is deep. Somebody said, me I preach just the cross. The cross is deeper more than anything. There is no less verse in the Bible. Every verse is so deep you don't have idea. Just the problem is to bring out the meat. But you cannot bring out the meat. Even if, because when they say Caracas, Jeremiah is Caracas, Isaiah is Caracas, and Matthew is Caracas. All of this book are Caracas, are dead bodies. We need to eat because the ego, he has to eat from the dead body. All of the Bible, the older book, 66 book, are Caracas. But you need to suck and to bring out meat. Somebody say, oh, uh, the Old Testament is already passed. Me, I just read the New Testament. Say, you, you, you are kidding. You can't preach the New Testament without the Old Testament. Just the problem, you are blind. You can't see from the shadow. Hey, this is the problem. Lord, the men of God, whatever it look dark, they are not. They just run to what you look, what you look like light. The title, just the anointing. The anointing. The anointing is on the New Testament, something like a reveal. When did you go to the shadow? They can't explain the anointing. Just running on the staff. The anointing of the Lord is upon me. He anointed my cup. Okay. Okay. Let's go back in shadow. Oh no. You can't go back in shadow. He said, no. You can't get the full package without be beginning in the shadow. The youngest, they are just sucking blood. No. Eh, sucking blood cannot satisfy the young ego. You have to eat the meat. That's why in churches today, we have our children who they are shifting. He was on this church today, after tomorrow in that church. We are saying, ah, this Christian, they are not serious. Judge, no. Where are somebody so full eating well? He can't go. They are running up, down, up, down because they are not satisfied. They are not. And this is also the problem in church. Whenever the pastor of the church is the youngest that I mean is that he has the ability only of sucking not to bring out meat where if another man of god came who can bring out meat you have to make sure to fight that guy because when that man of god will begin to bring out meat kids they love meat when they will begin to enjoy the meat they will fall in love with that man of god and this man of god he will begin to be jealous on that man of god but your problem is you have the ability of sucking this one can feed the children when children begin to eat and they are satisfied to like on the, all the Pharisees and the, 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 the Sadducees all of them they will just suck up they will just sucking up Moses sucking the scripture sucking the Old Testament when the owner came he said oh things Moses wrote is about me he began to explain children they love him by thousands 
And these people, they become jealous, you see? Everybody are running after him. We have to kill him. We have to kill him. No, you, you don't know how to cut the meat. You don't know how to bring the meat out. How to give to the children the meat so they can be satisfied. You are just feeling jealous of the guy. No, we have to kill this guy. He's taking all of our believers. All of our children, everybody that believes into him. Why not you could do what he's doing? If you can give the food. Every child of God, if he's eating well, he cannot go to another church. I guarantee you. If they are eating well and experiencing God in reality, in tangible way, they cannot go out. They are just going up. The, Jesus look at the, the sheep. I mean, to, that, to, 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 to those they were following him, he said, he look at them and say, you're just like a sheep. They don't have a sheep. Yeah, because nobody is able to feed you. Nobody is able to feed you. Moses feed them. Your father's in the wilderness, but Moses died. All of them are just playing games, just sucking up. We need people who they can cut the meat, they can cut Jeremiah, and they bring a life in Jeremiah. They can cut Isaiah, they bring a life in Isaiah. They can cut uh, um, um, Abakuk, they bring a life in Abakuk. They can cut Mike, they bring out life. They can, whatever the book, the other book, like the book of Naomi, you cannot hear it in church. Go in Psalms 23. Today in churches, I can tell you, million of church is on Psalms 23. Million of church, they are just preaching Psalms. The book of Psalms, the Bible. They are just preaching out those songs because it looks like easy to them. But their children they never read Ze Zephaniah. They never go in Zechariah. No, it's, it looks so complicated to them. Ezekiel, they don't read it because it looks so complicated. Revelation, yeah, forget about it. All that stuff looks too hard. What are you doing in this business if it looks so hard? What are you doing in this business? Because you need to feed them revelation. Abakuk, Zephaniah. You need to feed them whatever. My God. If you cannot feed the flock, why are you taking that title? No, the key point is we have a lot of men of God. They are after Psalms 23. Because it looks so good to them. They look so good and easy to them. No, what about Zephaniah? What about Ozai? What about the five book of Moses? What about judges? What, what, what about all those books? And the books I never hear in church in the book of Naomi. They don't talk about it. And explaining revelation, whoa, forget about it. Revelation is too deep. <sighs> My time is gone. <laughs> it's a young suck of the blood. But the grown up ego, I cannot just live like this because maybe next Sunday or now maybe I have time to come back on this again. The beat of the ego, the ego cannot live without a big. I'll explain something here. The ego cannot live without a big. I'll shift it on something and I'll come back on something. Let's go in the book of Judge. Judge chapter 14, verse 5 to um, Hallelujah. Oh my God. Judges 14. The book said this. In the book of Judge 14. From 5. Then Samson and his father and his mother went down to Timnah. And he came to the vineyard of Timnah. And behold, a young lion roared against him. Mm. I love this. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And he tore in part. Are you with me? He told the lion as the as as he would have torn a key, and he had nothing in his hand. Whoa, Kaprata Masiki. He has nothing, nothing in his hand, but he told the lion in two. He told the lion as the young goat. He told the lion in part, he cut it. He 
Nothing was on his end. But he did not tell his father or mother what he has done. I'm talking about the book of the ego. What I'm doing in, in, in the book of that's what I'm saying. All of this, they are caracas. We need to bring life. Home. Now, the key point is this Samson was going in Timna, and the book says the young lion came, he roared against Samson. Can I begin to teach this morning? The young lion are the scriptures. The Bible said the scripture kill, the spirit give it life. The scripture can kill. The scripture can kill. A lion is a killer. Oh. A lion is a killer. He's coming to kill Samson. It's like Jeremiah can kill you. You have to kill him. What I mean is, if you can interpret properly, you are dead. Because the Bible says you can't remove, you can't hide. If you remove, you hide. You got a problem with God. That means you are dead. Jeremiah killed you because you begin to preach nonsense which is not in the word of God. And the lion was coming against Samson. The Bible says Samson catch the lion and kill him. This is the man of God. When you, whatever you catch, Isaiah, you have to open it, you bring life. Whatever you got, Jeremiah, you have to open it, you bring life. Whatever you, you got, Malachi, you have to open it, to cut it, and bring life on it. Hallelujah. That's what men of God have to do. By one thing, the Spirit of God, nothing. I'm not, I love theology, I did. But we have degree and masters, but we are not able to open the lion, to kill the lion. I mean, you see somebody, I was watching one, <laughs> somebody said, I have five master degree. Now I begin to talk about covenant. I say, whoa, 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 whoa. I say, I have to ask you one question. You are talking about the covenant and this and this and this and this and this. Okay. I ask him one question. The guy say, you, you have different type of knowledge of the stuff we are talking here. <laughs> when I asked that question, I saw the men of God, all the men, theologians, those they have master's degree and whatever, doctors, PhD. I don't have it. I ask just a simple question in the Bible. I saw those that have a PhD. They say, they begin, it's just one question. And the one who was interpreting the guy as PhD. It, it seemed like he was not okay with the guy, first of all. But this one, you have even five of them. And the one that has one is not okay with the one he's preaching. It's the one that has one is interpreting the one that has five. Okay. People like us, I don't have one of them. As you are sitting. I said, I got a question for you. And I questioned my question. It changed the room. One question. You got a five master's degree, five PhD, whatever. Simple question. It became trouble. What I'm trying to say here is this. Samson has nothing, but you have degree. You have master's degree on theology. Praise God. But if you got a master's degree, PhD, if you can open the scripture, sit down, learn. Because your master do we can help you. If you can open a scripture, press God. There's nothing wrong to have degree, master degree. Press God, God alone bless you to have it. But that is not the key point. The key point is being able to bring life out of Jeremiah. To bring life out of any book. Don't run any book. Explain us the Bible in totality. Because we have women, men and women of God. They got a PhD. Praise God for the blessing of God on them. But whenever they begin to read, they say, this is their kids. I say, you have master degree, you have PhD. Really? But you need to sit down to learn. Because it seems like, it seem like you are confused what you are saying. You see, the problem is, Samson has nothing. Those they have nothing on their hand, glory be to God. Those who they have something, glory be to God. But the problem is, it's not about having nothing or having something. The problem is being able to kill the lion, to, to kill the scripture, to bring life. You can tear the scripture in two to bring life for God's people. 
Jesus was opening all the book. He was tearing all the book from Genesis. Jesus began to open whatever Moses said is about me. He began to explain that tabernacle. He explained everything in his body. But we are men and women of God today. Whenever they read other books, they run away from it. But they have something on their hand. Master degree, PhD, whatever, glory to God. But they are not able to explain the Bible. Say, oh my God. They are telling us the story what they learned in school. I'm not coming for that, yo. I'm coming to learn the realm of God. By the way, PhD cannot change logos to realm. The Bible says only the Spirit of God came upon Samson. That is more than enough. If you have degree, master degree, praise God for you. But be able to open, to bring life out of it. Are you with me, somebody? I thank God for you. You have PhD. Glory to God. May the Lord continue to bless you for that. But it's about carrying the scripture, bringing life out, giving to God's people. Hallelujah. I think I have to stop because my time is gone. My time is gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the, the key point is this. Let me just end here. The ego, he lives by his beak. The youngest, they can suck blood because the beak is not strong. What does the beak means? The beaks I'm talking about is being mature. is maturity. To grow in God's word. Because when you are strong, you can open scripture. You can, when you are not stronger, the beak is not stronger. Whenever you try to open, you begin to confuse. The beak of the ego is maturity. The beak of the ego is maturity. The beak of the ego is maturity. Being able to open scriptures and to bring life. To bring life out of it. Being able to bring life out of it. Are you with me? The beak of the ego is maturity. I think I'll just end here. Honey, I won't have time to talk about the rock, how you can grow up your beak, all of that. But I'll stand just here. But the key point here, yo, is the beak of the ego is being mature. Because whenever the beak is weak, the ego shall wait on the mountain, on the top of the mountain, until the beak shall grow and become strong. Don't run in ministry. Let your beak become strong. Don't run to preach others. Let your beak become strong. When your beak is strong, you can cut the meat. You can tore the stuff in two and bring out life. By the way, don't try even to carry title. He can shame you. Call me a brother, a teacher, whatever you want. As one day I want someone. And they say, oh, we have Dr. Chris going to preach somebody. Say, oh my God. This guy's not a doctor. You have a PhD and so on and so on. Say, no, I don't have one. No, I don't have one. Oh, you are not a doctor. Doesn't matter. In a few seconds, the guy became my interpreter. He have to come to preach after me. When I preach, the guy come and stood. He didn't preach. He didn't preach. Just, he began to, to give respect. And he finished there. He didn't preach. Just he took a wig out to pray. Or he tried to repeat what I said. Say, you, you was criticizing that guy. You got this and this. And after that guy finished to preach, and the guy come on second, so he's supposed to preach after me because he didn't know me. Uh, you know, just he look like a young man, you know, take you easy like that. So oh, I don't have any problem. Don't, don't, don't criticize somebody because of his size, because the way he look. As I was watching powerful man of God, he said, uh, I want to preach somewhere and somebody came. He was not preaching in French, I was preaching in French. Uh, the guy speaking Swahili and so on, so on, so on. But the next morning, everybody went to him. In counseling, nobody used to come to me. But I was preaching in French. And I, I have a name. But this guy came in the village and everybody went to him. They saw God in life. You see, title is good. I don't care about title. That gift is greater more than take that title away. Let me just to have the meat to bring that because whenever you bring the meat out, they will give you time. 
Whenever you bring that myth out, they'll give you title. You can sit there begin to laugh to those that are playing games and say, you guy, you need to sit down to learn. Hallelujah. Now, the key point here is this. The beak of the ego is to grow. Because the ego in the, in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, he say, those, just, those that shall wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Just the same way the ego do. How the ego do it? On the mountain top. You have to plug out the bent beak for the new beak. The bent beak is some of us or some of God's people, they think they are mature. Praise God. But you have to keep renewing yourself every day. Maybe you was mature in 70. Not today. Because knowledge is continuing. It's not something you reach and you stop. No. Every day. By the way, God don't have hand. Whatever you learn, it's just something. You have to keep on learning all the days of your life until we shall leave the earth. If you think you are mature enough, you are lying yourself. I have to learn all the days of my life until the end. The key point is keep learning. Because you will make you big strong. God bless you. I'm going to pray because my time is gone. I'm sorry. I have to go because my time is gone. We're going to pray. If you never accept the Lord Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity today to accept the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior. So you can grow your big to be able to use it. Now the key point here is this. Accept the Lord today first. So you can have time to grow your big. If you never did this uh, before, I would like you to do this. Just repeat prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I agree I am a sinner. Forgive my sin. I open my heart. I accept you as a Lord and Savior. I open my heart. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I give you my life. Be my Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you did this prayer, you are saved. You are born again. God bless you. And I pray for everybody now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother, sister, all around the world continent wherever they are I ask you to help us to grow our beak in your world the beak to grow is the same way that ego do to plug out our bent beak so the new beak can come and the, the new beak to grow to be able whenever we catch the prayer which is Jeremiah Isaiah which is Genesis which is Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, uh, Judge, all Judge, all of those books, sixty-six book, Father, is the prey. With, without the big, we can't eat. We're only sucking on the scriptures, but not getting in. Today we are living in generation of sucker. You are sucking without eating the real meat. And I ask you to grow our big. So we can be able to begin to cut, to eat the meat from Genesis to Revelation. Not jumping any book. Because you said they have to eat the lamb in totality. Not to remove some part to put aside. No, they have to eat in totality. There is no any book is less. There is no any book to put apart. Is to eat all the book, synthesis of it. To eat it all the days of our life. But it takes the big. Help us our big to grow for the glory of your name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord favor you. Those that are sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever is disturbing you, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. May the favor, the grace, the blessing of God to be with you all in the name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for spending this time together with us. We love you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you. See you to the next Sunday in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Libra, the Dickas, the